I'm going to move us on to our second article now, Article 2, and it's actually about the what we know and really what we don't know about the car that Apple is making. This is suggested by our community member Izzy Garcia on Instagram, so thank you Izzy for suggesting this topic, and to everyone else who's listening, if you have something that you want us to talk about, shoot us a message, shoot us an email, we'll do our best to learn what we can about it and bring it on the show. So first with this Apple car, basically let's lay down the basics of what we know. And I'm going to be honest, it's not a lot because Apple does a great job of keeping their next products under wraps. For a project that's been in the works since like 2014, we know, I think, very, very, little, right? very little about it. So basically, Apple wants to join the automotive industry and if you look at the size of the market, it's not hard to tell why. The smartphone market that Apple's in is a $700 billion market. The automotive market is $10 trillion. So it's 14 times larger, the auto market, than the smartphone market. And Apple's already the largest company in the world. I imagine they see this opportunity to take a slice of an even bigger pie and help grow their business. And they're pretty st- established within the electronics realm. And since EVs are the main main thing to go after in the automotive world now they're probably pr- pretty strong in that front yeah well right? they, they they probably have a pretty good team they definitely feel um more confident about moving into an electric vehicle market than they maybe would have a few years ago when you had to deal with gas um that being said i feel pretty confident in their team as well just having worked in the electric vehicle industry for a few years understanding kind of who the big players are at which companies Apple's hired some heavy hitters, man. They've got Doug Fields, who used to run the Tesla Model 3. They also hired Michael Strakuch, who led the powertrain for Tesla for years, and a bunch of other huge players from big auto companies. Um, in addition to their... This is an all-star team. Yeah, in addition to their experience in electronics, they've also hired some people who are basically all-stars in the EV industry to help them commercialize this car. So... Is Apple going to be manufacturing everything themselves, like in-house? So, from at least start from what we know right now, that's what that's the case. Um, they've yeah. had some talks with other car companies, Hyundai, for a while, and they actually made an announcement that they're going to partner. Those talks ended up falling apart um, in late 2020. Nissan also swooped in and said, you know, if it's not going to work out with Hyundai, we'd like to try. I believe Nissan's also stopped talking with Apple, so... At this point in time, Apple's planning to do it through their own vertically integrated supply chain and also through their contract manufacturer, Foxconn, who already helps them make a lot of their devices. So gotcha. between Apple and Foxconn, uh, it looks like, at least for now, that's where they'll be doing most of their vehicle production. So Apple will do the designing just like they do with the MacBooks, the iPhones, and so on, and Foxconn will do the manufacturing and the rest of the work. Yeah, I, I imagine that's the plan right now. And honestly, we don't really know what this car will look like. Um, We have an idea that they have patents and have been doing some hiring in powertrain, battery tech, vehicle safety, computer chip development, and then have been hiring software engineers to help with self-driving. But beyond that, we don't really know what this car will look like or do. Well, we also don't know what the product will be, right? Like we don't know if it's supposed to be a vehicle that you sell to an individual. We don't know if it's going to be like the canoe that just recently announced where it's like a subscription based EV or it could literally be like public transport, oh, excuse me, public transportation, right? Yeah. I mean, the only inkling of a rumor that we have right now is that they're building a car for a future without steering wheels. That's one thing that an insider has said. So in terms of what you and I consider a vehicle today, this is probably going to live outside the realm of what we think is reality at this point. Um, every car that's sold today has a steering wheel. And, you know, you mentioned a subscription vehicle. Something that I think about is, is it worth owning a car if you can't drive it? Um, so this may be more along the lines of, you know, people transport and a subscription service. Honestly, Apple's been moving more and more towards being a service-based company rather than a product-based company. But beyond that, right. we don't really know. And I think this is probably something that we can continue to update our community on through future episodes. Well, well, you know, whatever the future holds for Apple, I am excited for the iCar. Every Apple product I've had has made 
a very positive change in my life. For example, going from a Windows uh, <laughs> laptop to a Mac, Mac, a MacBook that has the OS X on it. Oh my God, I'm literally never going back. So I'm excited for them to bring that pizzazz into the vehicle industry 